living coral. I'm taking a break. Hi, welcome to Fiber Love Diary. If we haven't met, I'm Trish, and if we have met, you're probably coming back as your subscriber, and I appreciate you. Thank you, you're awesome. Okay, before I get started, don't forget, you have like one week left to enter the giveaway for this month. It is a Paradise Fibers box, a project bag with a Game of Thrones theme that has two adorable little notions bags. Those were donated by my local yarn store. It's called Knit and Spin and Shelby. Oh, by the way, they're having a big moving sale. So I'm going to put a link to the moving sale in the box below in case you guys want anything because they got some good deals going. And then also you will win a bat that was made by the Treasures of Hoggett Drollery. And it is like an Easter peep themed bat. It is super cute. You can see it in the video. I will link below, but I don't want to keep taking it out because the person who wins it should not have a bat that came in out of the bag a bunch of times that I messed up. I'm always thinking about you guys. So in my last video where I was showing how to put beads into fiber, oh, they're still on my lap, you guys. One of my regular subscribers named Judith Jones mentioned that she had dyed her pineapple fiber. And that she had used it to make a necklace with some beads and the living coral. Hi. Taking a break. And I was like, hey, I would love to see that. So she sent me some pictures and I asked her if I could show them to you. And you guys, this necklace is so beautiful. It's so like organic looking. As far as the shapes, and I think for summer, it would be just like the prettiest thing on like a plain linen sundress, like white or black. It's gorgeous. The colors are so pretty. And then one of her friends was like, hey, that would also make a good headband. So she took a picture with it on as a headband. And I agree because I love a cute, interesting headband that has like shapes happening and like not necessarily completely flat to my head, but a little bit of movement happening. It's so pretty. Isn't that cool? I love it. I love that you did something with merino wool that is like totally unexpected. It's so artistic. It's beautiful. And Thank you, Judith, for letting me show your project. I really appreciate it. I wanted to make this quick video because I had some trouble last year dyeing a plant fiber. And this month, April 2019, we got some pineapple fiber in the Paradise Box. So I figured some people would want to be dyeing it. It is really, really pretty. And I just wanted to give you a like little heads up on why why Trish why about a year ago just over a year ago I got a fleece at Maryland sheep and wool that was black and it had sunburnt tips and so I actually have some sunburnt black fleece right here so it, it was longer than this but it had the same idea so when you blend this with these tips you end up with like a chocolate brown instead of a black and I wanted black so I was gonna dye some of that wool black even though it was already black I don't know why I do these things before I threw the black wool into the dye pot I actually threw in some rose fiber that I had bought at a local shop kind of local and I wanted to dye that black or at least see what color I got the dye was a very saturated color so I threw in some rose fiber first. It was probably like an ounce. And then I threw in the wool. The wool came out black. The dye was not exhausted. The rose fiber came out looking black. And then as soon as I started to rinse it, it just all rinsed away. So I ended up with like lightly stained fiber. It was like not even dove gray or pearl gray. It was barely not white fiber. So I was like, oh, I guess acid dye isn't gonna work on rose fiber. Also, with the pineapple fiber, I did a little research. 
I was interested because someone else asked but I had already been thinking about like how do they do this because different plant fibers are made in different ways. Sometimes they're kind of like pulverized and then reconstituted. That's not the right word but um, I think it still kind of captures the essence of what I'm trying to say. And then some of them like flax are basically just pounded down into more of a simple fiber before you actually spin it. So I found an article and I'm going to link it below just in case anyone's interested. Like where do they get the pineapple fiber? And it looks to me like it's more similar to the way that flax is treated, but not identical. So, but during the whole process, I was wondering because it's a plant fiber, not a protein fiber, would I have the same problem that I have with the rose fiber. So also at the same time, because this is how my mind works, my mind was turning over like all the different plant fibers, plant-based fibers that I have dyed before because I've successfully dyed bamboo a bunch of times. So although I don't usually get as brilliant a color as I would with wool when I dye bamboo. So I decided to like do a experiment. I had some Procyon dyes which are made for plant fibers. So I did an experiment really more for myself but I filmed it because I figured maybe some of you want to know the same thing. Um, to see which plant fibers that I had in my stash would work better with like a plant based dye like the Procyon or if those plant fibers would do better with an acid dye. They're all made differently or derived differently or what is the word? They all are produced differently but um, and they all come from a different plant and like I said I've had success with some not others. So I filmed the process let's get to it. This is the vinegar with the pineapple fiber and it is being heated. The color is brilliant blue. It is the acid dye that went with the vinegar. So that's going to be the case in all these. If it's vinegar, it's acid dye. Okay, this is vinegar and bamboo also being heated and the color is apple green. We'll see how that goes. Trish, you can do it. So this is the soda ash and pineapple. It is not being heated. It doesn't need to be for the fiber reactive dyes and this color is sea glass. And then I realized after I had put that in and I thought oh yeah no I don't have to heat that but it was already in so I just left it alone. I put the other two soda ash ones and just left them. It is in with Little Boy Blue Fiber Reactive Dye. And this is the Soda Ash and Bamboo and it is in with the Celadon Fiber Reactive Dye. Let me see if I can pull this out a sec. So this is like a, oh no sorry this is Chartreuse. So it looks like it's taken some color but all of these um, once in the fiber reactive dye, I'm going to let them stay in the dye for a full 24 hours. So I will be back tomorrow to show you what's up. Okay guys, I'm going to rinse these out. First we've got the soda ash with the rose fiber. Again, I tried dyeing this with acid dye and it did not work very well. And you can see the dye is not completely exhausted, but I used kind of a lot considering how much fiber was in there. So I'm not surprised by that. So it did not take acid dye really at all. There was like a stain is what I would call it. It definitely took this much better. Next, I have the bamboo with the soda ash. I have dyed bamboo with acid dyes quite a few times. This also didn't completely exhaust but again I for the amount of fiber it was more dye than you would normally expect to use. So and look at that. Um, when I have tried to dye bamboo with vinegar and acid dyes 
it does take color but it's always much 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 fainter than wool would be I don't think that's the case with this I think this really took the dye much better than I've ever gotten it to before look at that Woo. so this is bamboo in acid dye uh, it's gonna be hard to to see but it almost exhausted and I but I used a much darker green um, it really actually took really well. So the bamboo seems to work both ways. Next, I am gonna rinse the pineapple fiber in the soda ash. Uh, the color I used for this was sea glass and it is the Procyon fiber reactive dyes. Look at that. I thought that sea glass would be really, really pretty with the um, living coral and the tanzanite, I was gonna say tourmaline, it was tanzanite that came in the box for March, I'm sorry, April. Look at that, that is gorgeous. Wow, it really took that color nicely. This is with the soda ash and the fiber reactive dye. Last, we're gonna look at the pineapple in acid dye. It definitely did not exhaust I used a, like a sixteenth of a teaspoon. Sorry, I almost a tablespoon, but that wouldn't be right. And it is very brilliant. So I think my reaction to this is that it's easier to dye than bamboo because both of these got a very nice color. So I'm gonna let these dry and then I'll give you another look at them and we will see you later so anyways guys interesting results right i did not try acid dye again on the rose because i already knew what those results were going to be but let me show you what i got when i used the dyes that were fiber reactive so this is the color that i got with the rose fiber and look at it it is so it looks so much like silk. I don't know if you guys will get the shine or not, but it's like shiny, it's so fine. It's just really, really pretty. And it's super soft. I think my conclusion on the rose fiber is pretty clear. It is so pretty. It really made me wanna like order more fiber reactive dye. Is that wrong? They say it's not wrong. Honestly, you can say whatever you want because I'm probably gonna do it anyway. So that's the rose fiber. This is the bamboo dyed with the fiber reactive dye. And I mean, it's pretty, the color is pretty brilliant. And this is the bamboo dyed with acid dye. Also, the color is pretty brilliant based on the dye color and the saturation. So to be honest, I feel like what this tells me is this works with both. And next, let's do pineapple. So, for the fiber reactive dye for the pineapple, I used the color sea glass, and it really took beautifully. I mean, this is the color and the saturation level that I would expect from wool from what I use, and it's just so, it's beautiful. I can, I'm gonna make some roll eggs with this like today. And then this one, it's kind of funny because I used, um, the acid dye I used was Jacquard's Brilliant Blue for this pineapple, and I definitely got a really pretty blue. Look at that. And honestly, what's weird is this was called Little Boy Blue for the fiber reactive. You can barely tell it apart. Look at how close those are. But let me say this. Based on the saturation and the amount of dye I used, I would have expected a much deeper blue. So I kind of feel like, unscientifically, but based on what I have done before with dye and the saturation of the water and the colors, I honestly feel like it took better with the fiber reactive dye. Look at how long that is, you guys. This is the pineapple. Surprise, surprise, 
this is what I ended up with. This gorgeous oceany soup of Trish colors. But hey, Trish colors are the colors of dye that are in my cabinet. What colors did you expect? 